Hello and welcome to this Trek initiative providing you with an update of exercise therapy for patellofemoral pain. I'm Dr. Christian Barton and I'm going to talk to you about how some of the more recent evidence around exercise for patellofemoral pain may impact on your clinical practice. First of all, we know patellofemoral pain is a significant problem and we know it's not self-limiting. But the question is, why does it still continue to hurt long after diagnosis and often after treatment and intervention? To consider this, one of the key things I always go back to is this concept of a vicious cycle that occurs as a result of the pain or the condition. Now, most conditions of musculoskeletal system, and particularly patellofemoral pain, will result from doing too much too soon and overloading the body beyond its capacity. Now, as a result of that overload and the result of pain, though, we often lead to maladaptive behaviours. And by this, we mean that it will change the way someone walks or runs or ambulates on stairs. And because of this, potential kinesiophobia and potential changes to function to reduce load on the knee will lead to deconditioning. In particular, in patellofemoral pain, what we often see is that this deconditioning leads to significant changes in hip muscle strength and function and leads to significant changes in quadriceps strength and muscle function. So we're going to focus on exercise therapy around these areas within this screencast but we do need to consider the multifactorial nature of the condition, considering other factors that might also contribute to ongoing pain. If we have a look at the most recent guide that was created in patellofemoral pain management in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, we see that active rehabilitation or exercise therapy is giving a big, strong focus around how we should manage the condition. Now within this guide, you'll notice that there's italics text and normal text, now the key thing is italics is based on expert opinion, normal text more so based on level one evidence. If we have a look at active rehabilitation specifically, what we can see is the majority of recommendations are based on expert opinion. But we do see good level one evidence to support the use of quadriceps and gluteal strengthening or knee and hip exercise therapy if we want to call it a different term. If we have a look further at the most recent consensus statement, um, lead author being Professor Kay Crosley, but a number of people contribute to this, including the participants of the patellofemoral retreat, which is nearly 50 individuals with a voting system. This led to six recommendations. Two of these six recommendations relate to the provision of exercise therapy, and in particular, recommending that exercise therapy should be used to reduce pain in the short, medium, and long term, and also to improve function in the medium and long term. Combining hip and knee exercises was recommended as opposed to just knee exercises alone to both reduce pain and improve function in the short, medium and long term. So clearly exercise therapy is a key approach that we need to use in our clinical practice for patellofemoral pain. Recently, Simon Lack, who's a PhD student at Queen Mary University of London, who I have the pleasure of working with, completed a systematic review looking at proximal muscle rehabilitation in patellofemoral pain. And we wanted to pose a couple of questions, and that was, is it effective to apply proximal muscle rehabilitation, especially considering more recent research showing muscle function deficits around the hip, muscle strength deficits around the hip? And then secondly, how did it stack up against our more traditional exercise therapy approach of quadriceps? Was it more effective to combine the two? And could we use some of the information within these clinical trials to guide what we can do in clinical practice? So I won't go through the methods in great detail. If you want to read more around the methods and the study, it's open access in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, so I encourage you to go there and read the full paper. But if we go to, to the results, what we see when we compare proximal rehabilitation compared to quadriceps rehabilitation we see that proximal rehabilitation programs have a better effect in terms of reducing pain in the short and medium term, but also improving function measured by subjective functional outcome measures, particularly in, in the medium term. So we can see very clearly that if we want to have the greatest effect and we've got limited time around exercise, in the short to medium term, using a more proximal exercise therapy program as opposed to a knee or quadriceps exercise therapy, pro therapy program is likely to be more effective. And there could be a number of reasons we could speculate why this might be the case. One potential reason is that if we do a quadriceps or a knee focused exercise program, we're still potentially irritating a patellofemoral joint, which has actually already been under too much stress in recent times. 
Whereas if we focus on a proximal rehabilitation program, we're still going to address potential deficits that are in that individual. And importantly, we're not going to put any undue stress on the patellofemoral joint, particularly if we stay away from closed kinetic chain exercises like squats and lunges, etc. So that may be some good justification for starting with proximal as opposed to starting with knee or quadriceps, particularly in the early stages of your rehabilitation. If we compare combining proximal with quadriceps compared to quadriceps alone, the findings that we look at here in terms of pain show that there's, again, an improvement in greater pain reduction when we combine proximal exercise to quadriceps. As we go through medium and longer term, and there's not lots of research in this area, so the findings are limited, but it does indicate that combining proximal with more traditional quadriceps programs is going to be more effective than looking at quadriceps programs alone. So very clearly, the more exercise we do, the better our outcomes are likely to be. The interesting finding for me around this isn't so much the pain reduction that we see, but it's actually the improvement in subjective functional performance in these individuals. We don't see significant changes, or we see very minimal significant changes in the short term, when we get to long term, so thinking beyond 6 and 12 months, we actually see much bigger changes in subjective functional outcomes by combining proximal with quadriceps compared to quadriceps alone. And the important thing here is we can probably reduce pain through various different interventions and in particular by reducing activity, but that doesn't mean that we're going to improve someone's functional capacity, quality of life and ability to participate in recreational activities or potential their occupation, etc. So a really important point is that if we're going to get someone much, much better as a result of exercise therapy, then clearly the combination of both proximal and quadriceps is going to be needed in the longer term. One of the questions we posed was how do we actually determine who is going to get better? And there's very little research around this, but also how do we then apply what we see in the research to clinical practice? So this is a big, heavy table, and I make no apologies for putting it up in this very short screencast. I don't expect you to decipher the whole thing right now. But what we looked at was a set of descriptors around how we might apply the research into clinical practice. So what was the load magnitude of the exercise, the number of repetition, the number of sets, rest between sets, variables like time under tension, were muscles pushed to failure, which is going to be important in strength training, what was the recovery time, so all of these things that are needed to replicate the exercise in clinical practice. You'll notice when you scroll across the table and the 14 studies included in this systematic review that actually none of the studies tell us all of this information. So in fact, not a single study is actually able to be replicated in clinical practice. Some key things that were left or missed out include rest between repetitions and time under tension. Time under tension we know is incredibly important for leading to muscle function gains and muscle strength gains. So we know that proximal exercise are effective, combining proximal and quadriceps or proximal and knee are more effective than knee or quadriceps alone. But what we don't know from the research is exactly what we should be doing. And in reality, it's probably gonna differ, differ for individuals depending on the patient that presents in front of us. So the, the key message here is we probably need to use some of our own clinical reasoning and we hope to unpack that as part of the upcoming workshop and hoping to provide some more guidance around this in some of our upcoming research, which you should watch this space for. So we're really left scratching our heads a little bit around some of these things, but the key thing message to take away is we definitely need to look at exercise therapy as our number one intervention for managing patellofemoral pain. So we have strong to moderate evidence that Exercise therapy will reduce pain and improve function. Proximal rehabilitation in isolation may be a very sensible approach, particularly in the short term, and particularly in those individuals where doing knee or quadriceps exercises may be more irritable. Proximal exercise in combination with quadriceps exercise in the longer term is certainly going to be something that needs to be considered. And importantly, we must incorporate proximal exercise as part of our management of patellofemoral pain. Now, clarity regarding the exercise prescription specifics is needed, but this is something we hope to improve on with some of our future research and look forward to seeing some of you at the workshop coming up in July and we'll unpack this a little bit more and we'll have a great practical session with Dr. Michael Raffliff from Denmark and it should be a lot of fun, but make sure you're ready to work really hard because some of the exercises, you're going to have to do them and they're going to be quite tough. 
So thanks for your time and attention today. Hopefully you've got something out of this short screencast and enjoy whatever you're up to for the rest of the day. Thank you and goodbye.